Welcome to Homicide the Podcast. <laughs> I'm Brandon. And I'm Kevin. And Homicide the Podcast is your favorite gay true crime podcast that's hosted by us two thirsty ass um, gay boys who love a delicious man or woman in uniform. Hmm. Which we'll tie that in today. <laughs> right. Anyway. I think there's a purpose for that. Welcome. <laughs> um, I'm really excited. Uh, well, first off, what's your story about today real quick? Um, my story, I gave, I have a couple titles for it, but one of it, one of them is Florida's Most Notorious Criminals. Ooh. Mm. And my story can be described, described, uh, can be described as a maritime human chow down. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, gross. So with that, <laughs> um, we have two people on, and you have not heard from our producer, Anna, in a while, mostly because of our fault. But um, <laughs> Anna is here with us again. So hello, Anna. Hello. Hello. So nice to be here. So excited to have you back on. And then today we have a very special guest. Her name is Hillary. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Talk close to your mic. Thank you so go. much for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary, I'm so excited to have you on today. And our episode uh, is titled Open Water is Scary Enough. Because um, we're talking about murders on water. Oh, right up my alley. I know. Yeah. So, Hillary, I don't know. Tell us and our listeners, who are you? How do we know you? All right. So, Kevin and I go way back to 2004. 2003. Is it oh. 2000? No. Yeah, 2003. No. Yes, no, because I graduated. You were a senior. In, yes, in 2003 was the start of it. And then January was 2004. And then I graduated in May of 2004. So we met in July, August of 2003. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, we go way back. The details are important on they this podcast. Are. That just shows our age. We <laughs> can't remember. It does. Um, yeah. So we go way back to uh, high school days. And um, we have been best friends yeah. since. Yeah, it's really interesting. Hillary was probably the first gay person I came out to. Yeah, we yeah. kind of came we out, came to out, each out together. We came out together, which is interesting. And then I told How my beautiful. friend Chelsea Turner, um, who lives in San Diego. But um, yeah, yeah, we met and then we're instantly friends. Um, and we bonded over Britney Spears. Oh, yeah. In the Zone yeah. album and Toxic. And I had a little Hyundai um, accent. That we would drive around in, but then Hillary had a LeBaron. Yeah, convertible. Convertible, which <laughs> as a yeah, gay people in the early 2000s uh, was really fun to cruise around in. Do you remember what we used to blast out in there? Yeah, Evanescence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank of you. course. How Thank could you. I forget? <laughs> Evanescence. <laughs> oh, but it was a specific song and a specific version. Yeah. Do you remember it, what it was? Um, was it Broken? Oh, that was another one. No, that, was that was so like, good. That, that was, was with C. C there, yeah. C there, yeah. yeah. Um, shit, I don't remember what the song's called. Broken. No, it was also the other one, though. That sure? was like the dun 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 yeah. or whatever. Was it's, it broken? Yeah. Oh, well, fuck. All right. There we go. But it was the version with the C there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, man. We, phew, the amount we, of hours we listened to that. Yeah, we killed that <laughs> shit. Um, the cool thing was, was I, met, I actually met Hillary in high school because my senior year in high school, I went to college part-time um, where we had, our focus was in forestry. So butch. Which, we love trees. <laughs> we did love trees. I tell people that though, and they're like, what? Who did I tell recently? And I'm like, oh, I'm certified in chainsaw. And they were like, yeah, we drove tractors and cut down trees <laughs> and studied water. Water. Took core samples from trees. I, we did, yeah. I'd we, say anybody we tell that you've done that, or it's like, they don't believe me. You did? They literally yeah. don't believe well, me. Well, and both of our paths went completely not into Whoa. the forestry realm. 100%. I know. Mrs. Maybe Dana Howard would be probably disappointed. Heather. Mm -hmm. Hi, Heather. Yeah. If she ever sees this. <laughs> Probably not. But You know, you had Heather, an impact and we think about it often. We, we just did. didn't go down that road. We did. And one thing we talk about often is the fact that you said <laughs> panties to get our attention in class. Yeah, so we say it all the time. And <laughs> now we say panties. You know. Anyway, yeah, no, Hillary, I love dearly. <laughs> and it's interesting because we're both from Colorado, but we both ended up living in Florida. Um, I have a weird story, but yours is pretty also, maybe not weird, but complex, but also interesting. So why don't you tell us what happened to you? Where did you go? What, what, you what do happened now? to you? Are you talking about how I got to Florida? Yeah. Uh, so
the the Coast Guard. Clearly, there's not a lot going on for me in Colorado, so I have no. to go where the water goes. <laughs> yeah, and, but you've um, been like a lot of places, right? Like, where have you kind of <clears throat> served or stationed? At? Yeah, uh, I went to Hawaii, and then I was in San Diego, and then I went to Florida, and then I was down in the Keys, which is where we kind of reconnected. Yep. Yeah, because that's when I came <clears throat> back. Because I went to Orlando for the Disney College program, but you were in—I mm-hmm. think you were in Hawaii then. Yeah. And that sounds like 2009. Well, no, that was when you 10. joined. I think. Yeah, I was in Hawaii from 2010 to 2012. Okay, and I came here 2009. Yeah. To the Disney College program. Yeah. So, Disney. but then I left. <laughs> I know. Disney gets you. Uh, and then it? I came back, but and then you met Brandon. Yeah. 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 I did, and I loved. And I then it was him. meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Interestingly enough, I was my ex and I actually met at the same. Well. I met you first, and then I met him later. Yeah, he came in late. Yeah. Weird. And that's the story of life for him, I think. <laughs> so um, with that, uh, Hillary, we're excited to have you here. And uh, it's fun that you're in the Coast Guard, and we're talking about open water Yeah, we did murders. it. Like a, a themed episode just for you. I'm yeah. so th- I'm honored. Right? I'm so glad to be here. Thank and, you. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, finally. And it would be interesting Sorry. to see how you like relate with your experience. Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, I've seen a lot of open water, and I can tell you, <laughs> being stuck out there, not any place I'd want to be. Yeah. So I can't wait to hear what you have in store for us. I know us my today. story's a little bit about that. But uh, before we dive in, Anna, how are you? What's new in your life? What's happening? How's New York? How was the earthquake? Yeah, right. The earthquake was freaky. Um, Before I talk about that, though, I just want to say this topic is so appropriate for this time because have you been thinking about the eclipse season at all? I've seen multiple videos about how eclipses and like the time in between eclipses has something to do with like catastrophic events in water. So oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Panic happens that? during no. eclipse season. Oh. Did it really? Um, yeah. And then there's been like multiple like bridge collapses during this time and multiple earthquakes. Oh, so oh, cool. And then with like is... the just recent bridge collapse. Oh yeah. my God, yeah. Mm-hmm. So well, this that is a was... very appropriate episode, I feel like. Um, yeah. But the earthquake was freaky. It really wasn't that dramatic. I kind of felt, I gaslit myself into thinking <laughs> that it was just <laughs> me being crazy and having vertigo or something until I saw that it was an actual earthquake. Um, but I heard that people that were on the ground didn't feel it at all. It was just the people that were like Up in, in the buildings. buildings. Yeah. Yeah, we had our friends that live in Jersey. Clinton, New Jersey? I can't remember what town they live in. Um, it's like an hour outside of the city. They their house yeah, shook, was called. but they were twenty miles from the epicenter. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it, it did yeah, shake I here. I did feel like my building was about to go down, and I also <laughs> live in such an old building mm-hmm. that some of the paint is kind of cracking on my wall. And I looked up and saw the paint cracking, and I was like, my building is cracking <laughs> in half right now. Like that's that actually was really where scary. That is terrifying. Because are you especially like high the up? Floor. Are you on like a high floor? I'm on the sixth floor, so I'm not that high, but high enough to where if if anything happened, I'd be dead. <laughs> yeah, but yes. like low enough where you could like get mm-hmm. out quickly. Yeah, maybe you know? yeah I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like if there's not sure. too much above you. I always feel like if a building's collapsing, is it better to be on the bottom or is it yeah. better to be on the top? And this is actually something we talk or about as all. we walk around the city. I <laughs> feel yeah, like the don't. lower part of the building is like your better bet. Well, right, you can, like, you can like, get like, out well, your quicker. foundation, right? Oh, like you're close yeah. to the foundation. Yeah, true. The higher up, you're a little bit more... Yeah, but I, I always feel like if the building is falling down, like if you're on a higher floor, you're like, ugh, ugh, you know, like as it goes down. <laughs> I don't know. Probably not. I think they, you know, this, I think it, it would all just happen. Like, of, you know, my first thought before any earthquake <laughs> yeah. thought is that building that fell in Miami, like, oh, two yeah, years that's ago, terrifying. That was just out of scary. nowhere. Yeah. That's what I was picturing was about to happen to my building. It was like a pancake, wasn't happened. it? Didn't it just it like, did. yeah, it just yeah. squashed yeah. all the way down. Yeah. No. That, that was a scary thing, man. Nope. Shit. Yeah. But there's a it's building that freaky. the side of the like facade fell out in like Brooklyn or the Bronx or something, right? Like oh, yeah. Last year. That. that one was. And that's happened scary. a couple times. It has. Yeah. These buildings are old. And yep. you live in an older building, like brick yeah. building, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. It's yeah. freaky. Which Honestly, that's probably better than a newer one. I feel like architecturally, right. yeah. you, <laughs> might be, you might be just, safer. Yeah. <laughs> right. Newer construction is just so cheap and built so quickly yeah. that yeah. I wouldn't. In 20 years, I would not want to live in one of those buildings. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. Yeah, well, that's what we'll be Valid moving point. to, um, actually. So. <laughs> Great. <laughs> anyway, um, Brent, how have you been? Oh, I've just been fantastic. That's great. I never have anything to say with no, that. I don't, don't even know. It's like whenever you ask me that question, it's like my brain just goes away. I'm like, I don't even know what happened this week. 
I don't either. We're very busy. We are, clearly. <laughs> we skipped another episode. So, um, Hillary, I don't know. How are you? I'm good. That's good. All right. Yeah. We're, yeah. Life is transitioning, but you are in a, a major transition, yes. But yeah. good things are on the horizon. We're good. So, yeah. Everybody's good. I love you, and I'm so glad that you're on. Yay. I'm so okay. excited to be here. Yay. All right. Well, who goes first today? I think you do. I think I went <gasps> first last time. Oh my God, I'm first in open water is scary enough, which let's talk about that for just a second. Has anyone ever been lost in open water? Any like of, any, any of like us? Like in, in the no. room? Yeah. Like in the room? No. No. <laughs> no. Anna. No, it makes me think of that TikTok song, the yo. Oh, oh yes. The North Sea videos. It yeah. fills me with such dread to think about <laughs> I know. That. Right? It totally does. Like that audio makes my anxiety like skyrocket. <laughs> yeah, <you know>? immediately. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't handle it. Yeah. And then I watch every video. Anyways. Yeah, me too. I'll always go to the, like, it'll make me so unbelievably uncomfortable. And then I immediately go to the sound and watch every single video because <laughs> yep. I'm like indulging in it. For some it draws time. you in. That's, that's why that app is so great um, in general. That's interesting. Yeah. No, water freaks me out. Every time we go on a cruise or something and we're like in the middle of wherever we are on a sea day mm. and there's like nothing. nothing. Um, yeah. It kind of terrifies mm. me. Yeah. And the, the water's really dark. Like. Yeah. Like, it's really dark, and it freaks me the fuck out. Yeah. But I like cruises, so. Well, do I? The ocean's yeah. a scary place. It, it, well, tell us about that, Hillary, because you're in the Coast Guard, so. Uh, yeah, so I've, I've seen many different bodies of water, like many yeah. oceans. I and, heard um, bodies. bodies <laughs> I, <know. they're>, uh, <laughs> I was thinking bodies in water, bodies too. bodies in water. Like, <laughs> yeah, so the, many bodies in the water. Yeah, the sea. I, I have seen bodies in the water, but yeah. um, the sea is very unforgiving, mm. so, like, the weather that mm. is, you know, that's the scariest part. I'm like, yeah. you are literally just on a metal boat that somehow floats. Right. Yeah, that's bizarre. And the me. weather yeah. and the sea state can just be insane. And uh, it's, you just hope that you don't die out there. Oh, you know? my God. <laughs> yeah, that's not a job for me. <clears throat> Did you guys see the movie Poseidon? Where the big old cruise ship like capsizes or whatever from oh, a road like, wave. That's like a remake of the original, original yeah. which, yeah, that movie <laughs> might have sparked some anxiety for sure. A hundred percent. Like, could that happen? Like, rogue waves are a thing, right? Yeah, they are a thing. Yeah, 100% they are a thing. Like, how big can they be? Big. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we had one. Uh, we were coming back from, where were we? We were off the coast of, like, California somewhere. I want to say, like, San Fran in the middle of the night. Just the whole ship was like, I was getting ready for a watch. And the boat was just like, boom. And it like shifted like part of our helo hanger. The fuck is a helo it. hanger? Where we put the helicopter. <laughs> oh. So the, for size purposes, the, the, that makes sense. they call them a cutter. Our cutter was like 378 feet long. And it like cracked <gasps> like the metal. Oh my gosh. It was scary. Like uh, uh, everything just went flying and uh, you're supposed to be like secured for sea regardless because, you know, things happen. But yeah, we were all like, what the hell? Yeah, that would be terrifying. Yeah. It yeah. just came out of nowhere. No, thank you. One and done, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep, 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 yep. It happens. I yeah. love sitting at a desk all day. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You guys still need to come for a boat ride. I do I want know. to come for a boat yeah. ride. That'd but be fun. How far would we go out? Not far. Okay, I'll, I'll just keep it close. Just like, can I see you... land? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I yeah, see yeah. land? If I can see land, then I'm more comfortable. Even though because I've you've been on ride. boats where you have not been able to see land and you are still around. My favorite time on a cruise though is when you're like right off the shore and like cruising by. Like mm. it was when we were in Greece and we yeah. like, or maybe it was Greece or I don't remember. But we were like cruising in the Mediterranean and like that was cool. Yeah, it's beautiful. It was yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It was very calm, um, which I liked as well. But I well, did it's because it's not like. Full ocean. No, I do. I was on a cruise though in 2010. Yeah, right before I moved to New York City, um, where we got caught in a storm mm -hmm. and it was a fucking horrible. <laughs> like, I was wrapped in towels on the deck because it's the only place I couldn't get sick. Um, mm. And I was covered in salt <laughs> because I was like laying there for like five hours and just salt. And the ship, I could, as it was, I could see it going like this. Oof. or whatever up and down and yeah. i was like i fucking hate this yeah. all the elevators were closed there was vomit everywhere gross yeah there's gross. a if you don't ever go to the bering sea but up that's in the straight between oh wait what? yeah go up to alaska oh it's uh like we go took, to alaska instead of the just i mean go anywhere up yeah. there but like the like youtube videos of the bering sea it's like which that's the straight between like antarctica and south africa right or some shit no what is that called that was inaccurate. 
Oh, you're home. talking about um, it's like a stretch of like really rough seas that every cruise ship has a rough time getting through. But it's like mm. somewhere. But I thought it was like South Africa and no, I'm it is. I, know. I know exactly what you're talking about, right? but I don't. I am trying to look it up. I don't know, but yeah, the we, Drake Passage. The Drake Passage. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Is Google. that New York or is that Tampa? The alarm. Is that you, Anna? <laughs> It's me. Someone's <laughs> dead. Someone is dead. No, Emergency. Right. Well, shit. But yeah, look up. We ha- I, there's a video of our ship. Like that I was up on watch for it. Somebody took it. Really? And we were in like 30 foot seas. <gasps> and we like just dropped. And it. No. Nope. Pucker. No. Puckered for sure. Puckered? I was like, we're gonna break your butthole. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your butthole. Your butthole. You're everybody, everybody, you just like watch it and you're like, no. My God. That's you know those uh, those these are also on TikTok. Those videos of like people in big ships, like cargo ships, mm-hmm. that are like hanging onto something and all of a sudden their body is like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's yes. terrifying. Yeah, we've had like people like from like the floor to the ceiling like be able to jump because it's just an anti gravity chamber oh. up forward. I would be puking the entire time. It's scary. Yeah. You yeah. get used to it, though. Do you, though? You do. <laughs> do yeah. you, though? You do. <laughs> I don't know. You do. I, like, the first day of any cruise ship, I'm always sick. Yeah, really? but you wouldn't. Every time. But, yeah. Kevin, you wouldn't be the first one to be like, yes, I want to put myself in that position. No, you I would, would be say, like, no, I'm not going to do it. It's like when we go to an amusement park, and I'm like, I'll hold our bags. <laughs> yeah, oh, like, I'm, I'm going to get you those glasses. They make those, like, seasickness glasses. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they have, like, this fluid in the bottom so that your eye can focus, so it's like you're looking at the horizon. Oh, oh that's, that's interesting. Really cool. They look like, um, you know those, like, straw glasses that you had when you were, like, a little kid? You know mm. what I'm talking about? No. All right. Well, they look like no. that. They look absolutely ridiculous. But it's if like, they help, then no. If it listen, I get the bracelet mm. shit. I'm taking uh-huh. you know, patch you on the, the Ritalin. Ritalin. Or Ritalin. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I do not take Ritalin. I did take it when I was little, but I don't take it for cruise. Yeah. I guess. But yeah. If I got really seasick, I'd rather look nerdy than be vomiting everywhere. I would. Yeah. I would completely sure. agree with so, that. Yeah. You no. Know. Not. Not my thing. And <laughs> here's another long-winded intro, uh, but that's okay. It's so typical. Yeah, let's, uh, all right, are we ready to dive into? Yeah, I'm excited to hear yours. Dive in. Are you ready? Diving, yeah. Dive into the water episode. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm ready. I got let's my take water splash. wings on, you know? We're diving in officially. I can't wait. Yep. Head first, or maybe not head first for some. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Cannonball. What? I just assumed that was like a oh. tell into your story. <laughs> oh, got it. You had me freaked out. Sometimes Brandon does some shit and I'm like, what? What's wrong? And he's like, I assume you know everything that's going on inside of my mind. I don't. You don't, but I just assume you do. So we are best friends. You're but, welcome. Um, I don't know. Most of the time you understand what I'm thinking. I do. Like this morning, whatever we did, we did at the same time. And I can remember I was brushing my teeth and you did it. And I was like, shut up. I just did that too. What were we saying? Are we saying we're weird? <laughs> we are weirdos alone. Okay. All right. Anyway, whatever. Let's dive in. I think people are starting to see we're weirdos on this as well. I know. So. All right. It's charming. So <laughs> my title is Richard's Mates Were Shite. So it was May 19th of 1884 when four men hopped into a small yacht to set sail from Southampton, England, which also happens to be the same uh, port that Titanic actually would sail out of on its mm. maiden voyage <laughs> in Southampton. That's bad juju already. I know. Right. I know. And I'm excited that this is an old one. We haven't done an old one in 1884, a Yeah. So the four men were taking the yacht named the Mignonet. I'm probably saying that right. M-I-G-N-O-N-E-T-T-E. Uh, to its new owner that was in Australia. So the captain was Tom Dudley. He was 31 years old and he was a proven yachtsman. Also in tow were Ned Brooks and Edwin Stevens, who also happened to be seasoned sailors. Uh, rounding out the crew was its fourth member, cabin boy, Richard Parker, which... He cabin was their boy. peasant. That's <laughs> That's, he's like their bitch. That's what I right? thought. That's what it sounds like, too. <laughs> no, just wait. Um, <laughs> okay. This was actually Richard's very first voyage on the open sea. But um, even though it was his first voyage, his family were actually sea- seafaring. I've never seafaring. heard that word. Seafaring. Seafaring. Thank you yeah. so much. That's what I'm here for. Not no. seafaring. No, seafaring. <laughs> Earlier, I was like, seafaring. What is that? And I'm like, that's not spelled as seafaring. Sea, sea what? Fairing. 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 Yeah, I'm not going to get it. Seafaring <laughs> family. Um, and he sailed extensively in inshore waters. I don't know what inshore waters means. What Close does mean? to land. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So he's not he's not a big, big ocean open water big guy. Open so it's water yeah. guy. the water by the shore. So he's me. Anyway, the crew uh, prepped the yacht. They set sail uh, for their long journey to Australia, which is quite long in general. But uh, things didn't go as planned. 
And uh, what happened on their journey would send the crew scrambling to survive and would ultimately lead to murder. How big is this boat? Not that big. I That's mean, their crew question. was like, what, four or five? Only four people, yeah. yeah so so it's like a smaller, it's smaller yacht. It's a yacht in the 1800s. How, like, how big were they? How big and how Probably like, not very great big. they no. were. It was big enough to have a dinghy, but I think you pull a dinghy behind you, right? I mean, dinghies vary in size, oh, okay. <laughs> you know? I don't know. How big is your dinghy? Um, <laughs> you would know. Big enough. No, I don't. Uh, so do, does everyone know what a dinghy is? Because I didn't totally. Yeah. yeah, I mean you do. Yeah, but a dinghy is a is like a little life boat. Yeah, yeah. So at this time, probably just a puddle, pedal boat, mm. paddle. Um, yeah, pedal boat. Oh, it sounds like you were saying puddle. That was a puddle boat. It's a puddle boat. <laughs> but <laughs> puddle boat. Puddle boat. Anyway, so this is actually the story of the ill-fated yacht, the Mignonet. Uh, whose crew would sacrifice a member in order to survive and would leave a lasting legal and cultural legacy, a legacy that actually extends to today. Oh, which is interesting. True. So it's worth saying that I pulled the story from uh, History Extra, which is an official website for BBC History magazine. So like everything I pulled was from that. So no plagiarization because I just cited you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so anyway, here's some overall kind of interesting stuff. So it was the spring of 1884 when an Australian gentleman... Um, visiting England, purchased the the, the yacht, uh, which he wanted delivered to his home in Australia. So he found Tom Dudley, who was a 31-year-old, who appeared capable of undertaking the task, and he in turn recruited three other men to help him, which ended up being um, Stevens, Brooks, and then and Parker. Um, so the other three. So they set sail from Southampton, like I said, on May 19th, um, and set a southerly course to round the Cape of Good Hope, making a couple of stops en route to rest and restock their supplies. Hmm. So sounds like a trip I would not take. Yeah, no. Myself. It's kind of the weird thing about adventures on in the sea back mm -hmm. in the day is like they kind of were just like, are you able-bodied? All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah do you want to make a couple <laughs> schmeckles or whatever, sure. you know? You cool <laughs> to be on, on a ship for three months or four months or whatever? Yeah. Like what? Yeah, and no. also what? Like how long was their transit? I, they, I, I only got to where that stopped oh. mm. well, how far was it? i think it's about four months though i think it's like a three to four months trip i think Ew. Mm. Long. i could be wrong if you're a listener and have that information please provide <laughs> yeah it. let us know yeah how long so, did it take to get <laughs> well how long would in, it have in taken? the 1800s late 1800s late 1800s well 84 yeah no that's late <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. anyway i was born just 102 years later <laughs> so Wow. The coincidence. <laughs> it's there. May 19th, almost May 19th, birthday. almost my birthday, yeah. And your birthday, so. And your birthday. Everyone's birthday. Crazy. I know. Hillary and I do share the same we birthday. We do share the same birthday. May 21st, just a year apart. Oh, wow. That's right. I know. Best friends forever. We're twins. We are. We even got the same tattoo at one point. We did. We look, did. You see, look at my scar. Oh, I can yeah. see the scar. Yeah. Hillary had hers removed, whereas mine is still on the back of and my I neck. And I only had it removed because I couldn't get into the Coast Guard with yep. the neck tattoo. That's right. And oh. mine, so. I forget, is there because I can't see it. So. <laughs> but everyone else can. And they're yeah. always like, what, what is, is that? that? Yeah, it, what is in it? boot camp, they were like, were you in a gang? And I was like, I was not in a gang. It kind of looks like it. it, it well, mm. it's just scarred up. So it was oh, like still healing when like I went. Right. So they were like, were you in a gang? Like oh. yelling we'll at have me. To, and I was like no. doing push ups. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, no, I was not in a gang. We'll have to post a picture of it on Instagram. Yeah, I'll post a picture of it on Instagram. But what but is basically, it's the number 21. With the Gemini symbol like intertwined with it, I think that mm -hmm. the artist drew it that day. Yeah, he did. Yeah, and he we did. were like, just do that, and we yeah. got it. Um, and it is still on my neck, looking gross because it's been there for <laughs> quite some a time. long time, <laughs> like twenty years. Yeah, or more. Great. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, all right, let's talk about the incident. So on July third or July fifth of eighteen eighty four, not sure which one because it was listed multiple ways. Um, they were about 1,500 miles off of the coast of Africa after leaving Madeira on their way to Cape Town. So during this time, they encountered really strong winds and high seas, kind of like this you know, rogue wave that we were talking about. <laughs> well, one hit them. Oh, that's um, great. And it overpowered the boat, sank it. Um, so in that kind of moment where they were trying to like get the dinghy and all this shit, um, they weren't able to get much in general. Um, and the one thing that they really wanted to get that they did not get was water. 
Yeah. So, oh, well, that's not a great thing. Yeah. Although they're surrounded by water, not the water they should be drinking. Well, no. Also kind of curious what their emergency water supply looks like back in the 1800s. Oh, yeah. That's what I think. Like, was it a barrel? Was like, it like, yeah, nowadays probably. we have like weird kits. Mm-hmm. It's like in these like foil packets. Oh, interesting. You know, well, you also have water, like the filter shit, right? Which you can drink the ocean water I, if you. Yeah, we don't have those, but yeah. I'm sure they exist. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. that's a thing. But We um, got one for our doom yeah, Somebody grab the, uh, <laughs> grab the barrel of water. I don't know. <laughs> like how do you t- no, that shit's going down. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, they found themselves obviously in a very desperate situation um, as they became adrift in the South Atlantic, hundreds of miles from land. The only really thing that they were able to get was two one-pound tens of turnips. Oh, you. Okay. Gross. I'd rather go hungry. I know. <laughs> yeah. Gross. So gross. So over the next 12 days, they rationed out the turnips with Tom using his pen knife, which I don't even know what a pen knife is, um, to divide tiny portions of the rationed turnips or the turnips that they rationed also how long does a turnip last right you know like how can you have a turnip before they turn (laughs) yeah right like those turnips will only last four days i don't know that's yeah great question Hmm. i guess they could have put them in salt water and (laughs) gross you know yeah but like just the thought of eating like dry yeah yeah they were probably already like weeks old already (laughs) because they're long transit hard pass on the turnip so (laughs) That's what they had. So they were, I mean, listen, the amount of weight that they probably lost during that time, I could use a turnip time. Yeah. Who <laughs> needs Ozempic? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just get lost at sea with turnips. Yeah, Done. that's right. Um, so eventually they caught a, tur- a poor turtle that swam by um, and obviously ate the shit well, out of that turtle, uh, hmm. eating all the meat. I'm sure that helped them stay alive quite a bit longer. Yes, but I'm pretty sure that you can't do that these days. Like you need to leave the turtles alone. Thank you. Also, like, how did you cook the turtle? Did you eat it so, raw? Probably yeah. raw. I asked Hillary that earlier. Turtle tartare. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> <laughs> turtle tartare. <laughs> Poor little Just turtle. let it, like, Ceviche. yeah, leave it out in the sun yeah. for a little bit. Yeah. And you know the turtle was probably like, what the fuck? Right? Because yeah. all of a sudden it's just lifted out of water. I don't know. And, like, how big was the turtle? Like, I don't think there's a lot right? of meat on turtles to begin with. I don't, either. I don't know. I've never eaten one, though. I but I guess no. if you're starving. Yeah. So, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. And I'm assuming they did yeah. a lot of things. So they, they ate the little turtle. Then they would catch raindrops whenever a rainstorm would come. Um, but eventually they resorted to drinking their own pee. That's going to be a no for me. Yeah. yeah. Which we talked about pee last time. I'm not into it. No. So I would not be drinking my own pee. Yeah. Yeah, but Have if you, you can't drink movie? anything else. Wait, which you movie? you seen that movie, 27 Hours? I think is what's, what it's called. Oh, oh. with his arm? Yeah, he like gets stuck under a big boulder. Oh, that's James his Franco, arm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then like he starts story. like drinking his own pee, and that's how he survives. Yeah, there's like mixed reviews on drinking urine. We looked it up we earlier. Did. We did. <laughs> it's like some are like, <laughs> yeah, like some people some love are, it. Like, no. Yeah, right. There's yeah. probably a whole yeah. group of people that enjoy it just for funsies, <laughs> yeah, even though right. they have access to fresh filtered water. Yeah, I don't know. Right. <laughs> so weird. I've definitely seen some pornos with like. Oh, with that. And I'm like, yeah. why? That's, yeah, yeah. hard no. pass. No. Yeah, thank no. you. Mm-hmm. No, thanks. No. no. Um, but like, if you, yeah. with, what, if you're like, okay, there's a salt water which will only dehydrate me even more, or my urine, and I'm, my throat is on a fire because I'm not, I don't have anything to drink. Or my urine. Yeah. I but agree. also, like, dehydrated people's urine, that's right. got to be the most. It's like the stinky urine. Oh, it's like it if is. you have asparagus and you're like, wow, I had asparagus. Oh, but God. it's like, yeah. so dark and like, oh my God. Brother, ooh. Ew. Okay, so they could only <laughs> do that. <laughs> for, this is why we don't go on boats. Yeah, no. <laughs> they could only do that for a little bit of time. So by July 17th, all supplies on board the little dinghy had been exhausted. So um, about this time is when Tom uh, started thinking of the topic uh, that's called custom of the sea, which uh, was something in the 1800s um, that basically was the practice of drawing lots uh, to select a sacrificial victim that could be consumed by his crewmates so that everyone could survive, mm. um, which is really interesting. So basically mm. they would be like, all right, like in order for us to survive, we're going to like draw straws, um, and whoever has the shortest um, gets killed and eaten. Oh. So cool. Well, that sucks. I know. So three days after he started thinking of that. So many questions. I know. <laughs> Keep going. Little Richard Parker, who was 17, just couldn't take it anymore, and he ended up gulping down seawater in an attempt to quench his thirst, which just makes me break. That might makes me break. It breaks my heart. But he ended up drinking way too much, um, and Sue became violently ill, collapsing at the bottom of the boat with um, extreme diarrhea. Oh no! Yeah. Which let's talk about that for a second. If somebody has extreme diarrhea, like at least bend over the boat. 
Right. Yeah, and take a swim. Water. Yeah, but also it's still the 1800s, so you're in the you're just shitting in a bucket, I'm sure. Oh, it must have been so stinky. I bet they didn't have a bucket. <laughs> uh, probably mm, not. No. He just was like, oh, yeah, the, he just yeah, shat on the ground. The boat. Yeah, and then you add already like <laughs> oh, no. severe dehydration into mm. that. Like uh-huh. you're done. No, Poor he was cabin Ill. boy is. Oh, no. He's and out. No, and at, like were his other, like, I just like, uh, were the other crew members like, no, don't do that. I'm or sure they, they were all just like, like, I'm fucking hungry. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they were like, go ahead and drink that water. You know, <laughs> yeah, this problem's about to solve itself. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? We're You're not like gonna have rave. to do a lottery <laughs> for any of it. No, You're just in the corner, like, yeah, like Richard. he just <laughs> sacrificed himself. I know. So, over the next coming days, um, obviously, Richard's condition deteriorated, and Tom began to think about the concept of custom at sea again, mm. where he was like, mm, draw, you know, draw straws. It feels very piratey, I know, <laughs> except for. They didn't draw straws. So on July 25th, after almost three weeks adrift, which is crazy, Tom actually insisted to Edwin that they sacrifice Richard because he was dying anyway. And they actually had wives and children and he didn't really have anyone. Oh. So um, he also insisted that human flesh has been eaten before in the past. So it wouldn't be a big (laughs) deal. But Edwin was like, absolutely not. Um, Until daybreak came and Richard was looking, you know, bleak. Um, Edwin was like, okay. Maybe we can do that. So that next morning, instead of like what? I mean, he sounded like he was bad enough where he might have died just from natural causes. Sure. Yeah. Which they could have just waited and ate. I don't know. (laughs) So anyway, the next morning when Edwin was like, oh, yeah, maybe. Um, Instead of doing the custom, right, the custom of the sea and drawing lots, um, Tom told Edwin to hold Richard's legs um, if he were to begin to struggle and then knelt down beside Richard and thrust his penknife into his jugular. Oh. That's quick. And here's where things get a little, well, it's all <laughs> twisty right now, but here's where things I was like, ew. Now it gets real. Um, so according to their own accounts, because they were very forthcoming, um, they um, used a chromometer case, which I don't know what that is either, um, but used that to catch the oozing blood which they then passed around to moisten like their parched mouths. It's, it's like what? wine. Oh, God. It's called a chromometer case. But they Sounds basically... Like it does, really. Right? But also, if you yeah. go in the jugular, doesn't that shit just shoot out? Mm. Yeah, I mean, you're going to bleed out in yeah. like minutes. Like minutes, yeah. yeah. So they caught all the blood, and then they just passed it around to um, moisten their parched mouths, which is gross. So they just started drinking his blood. That makes me feel kind of sick. Yeah. Me too. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yep. They then stripped him. Yeah. And cut his body up, but not in a way that you think. So they first just dove into eating his heart and his liver. Oh. I'm not sure why, but I'm sure that it has its high in uh, something that they may need. Iron, maybe? I don't know. Well, right? That would make sense. You? Mm. I mean, it sounds like <clears throat> they opened him and they were like, let's just d- dig in. They're like, yum. Ugh. So the after they did that and they were feeling a little bit satisfied, they then cut strips from him of flesh from his limbs and then set that aside for future rations. And then what, whatever was left of Richard was pushed overboard. Wow. Yeah. And so they ate the remains for several days, but the flesh obviously began to rot out in the extreme heat oh and sun God. and all that. So on July 29th, after 24 days of drift, now remember, they decided to... K- to kill him, excuse me, on July 25th, July 29th, 24, after 24 days adrift, a ship was sighted on the horizon. <laughs> mm. And that ship was called the Mach, uh, Machtezuma, a German vessel that was bound for Hamburg, um, had spotted them and came to its aid. So um, they were all cared for, and a month later they arrived back in Falmouth, England. What's interesting, though, is that there's conflicting information that says that they pushed his body overboard, but then like later in the trial, they like fought for them to bring his body back or something. I don't know. It's weird. Hmm. So that was the situation. So let's talk about the arrest and the trial. So from the moment that they were rescued, Tom actually made no attempt to hide or gloss over the fate of Richard, like at all. Um, he was really forthright and he was honest. And so, um, in his mind, he thought killing and consuming Richard was a tragic necessity. Um, and that uh, they took the drastic me- measures. Is that little Finn again? No. Oh. He's screaming child. We can never escape them. <laughs> <laughs> They're um, everywhere. I know. So the authorities in Britain uh, viewed these matters differently. And so, oh, no, that's Finn again. Oh, little <laughs> nugget. <laughs> um, 
so anyway, public um, opinion in Falmouth was actually pretty sympathetic to the crew's actions. However, the local shipping master was required by law to notify the Board of Trade um, of this violent death on a British ship. So um, he sent a telegram to London, and then they, of course, arrested the three surviving men. The, the crew was pretty amazed at the turn of events because they were like, what? Um, so then this actually got them caught up in this legal process. Um, and basically the, the ruling of um, the process not being followed of custom of the sea. So what's interesting is that 10 years previous uh, to this, there had been um, uh, another like cannibalized, can, cannibalized whatever wreck of the Exun. Um, and that date, the legal establishment had sought to prosecute the perpetrators, but uh, it collapsed in general. So they actually saw this as another opportunity to go after um, this kind of like custom um, of the sea idea. So the crew um, appeared before the magistrates. And so Ned was exonerated, actually, um, because he played little to no active part in the killing um, and did not like consume much. But Tom and Edwin um, were arraigned for murder. So uh, what's interesting is that outside of the courtroom, Richard's older brother, who was also a sailor, actually like shook their hands and like gave them like the to be like like we understand that mm-hmm. you had to do this to our to our brother and our son or whatever, um, which is really interesting. So the trial actually began in early November of 1884. And it was apparent that the outcome was largely actually predetermined. So addressing both a jury and a packed chamber, Judge Baron Huddleston, a uh, very British name, um, <laughs> opened the trial with a detailed explanation as to why the law could not recognize um, the necessity um, as justification for killing. So they were saying that we had to kill him because we like it was necessary for our survival yeah. or whatever. So the defense's case was like then invalidated in general. So this kind of was like set up for them to fail. So they basically were like, they, they described their desperation of like having to fight for survival or whatever. His account, Tom's account of what happened um, aboard the, the ship appeared to have fallen short of the requirements. Um, instead of engaging in a random selection process, he and Edwin focused solely upon the boy. Um, and it seems that they kind of waited for him to get sick and then like killed him. And so the decision was made um, uh, to like to take his life, obviously. So the interesting thing is, um, this is what I, they, so when they were picked up, they insisted that the body be taken back to have like a Christian burial and or bu- burial, <laughs> burial um, in a Britain. Burial. But, <laughs> burial. but uh, again, that was conflicting information because it said that they had like threw his body overboard or whatever. So um, the verdict. So despite the, the steering of the judge, the jury was actually reluctant to pronounce Tom and Edwin guilty. What's interesting about the time there is that murder at that time was like you were executed automatically yeah. in general if you were guilty of murder. So um, in another pre-planned gambit, the judge offered the jury the option of returning a special verdict, uh, an unusual judicial procedure which referred the case to a higher court. Um, So Tom and Edwin were ultimately convicted of murder, but not by the jury of their peers, but by instead the panel of five judges. So the verdict required the senior judge uh, to sentence them to death, but it was assumed that the press, it was assumed in the press that a pardon would quickly follow, but um, it didn't. And uh, so two convicted murderers, um, they uh, could not walk completely free of punishment, uh, whatever the circumstances. But in the end, the secretary settled on a sentence of six months imprisonment, and that's it. And so both Tom and Edwin were um, dispatched to Holloway Prison to serve out the term. So what's interesting is that there's a professor and historian of law, Brian Simpson, that um, described that trial as procedurally a complete mess. But what's interesting is that it gave, and this is why it kind of like ties ties back to like law and like current day shit. So it gave a definitive ruling on the custom of the sea and Regina versus Dudley and Stevens, which were Tom and Edwin, uh, remains to this day the case used to introduce students of common law to the complexities involved in pleading necessity as a defense to murder. It's like the idea of like doing, like murdering somebody and saying I had to, like it was a necessity I had to, um, in the sense of like, like, being having to eat them or whatever. I mean, that's yeah. So it's a fine line, right? Yeah. Like, um, in this way, the crew um, achieved a degree of immortality because they're still used in law books today. Yeah. To like to talk about this necessity thing. So 
Um, what's interesting, and I did not know this, away from law courses and school rooms, the greatest victim in the whole story um, was uh, achieved, um, or I'm not even reading that right. Anyway, Richard <laughs> Parker lives on. So what's interesting is that in Jan Mar- Martel's best-selling novel, Life of Pi, um, Ang Lee, I, I, you guys, Life of Pi, the mm-hmm. movie that came yeah. out. Um, so what's interesting is that that's the story of Richard Parker, but instead of his fate being like this crew, it turned into like this tiger. Oh, that's um, interesting. Yeah. Uh, so instead of him being killed and eaten by his companions, instead of full-grown Bengal tiger was replaced as that crew, which is interesting. Um, and so... Here's uh, also an interesting note, and I don't know if you've heard of this, and probably not, but it says um, that seafarers sorry, yes. <laughs> um, called Richard Parker uh, seem to suffer from a curse. So it seems inadvisable for anyone called Richard Parker to go to sea, as commentators at a time noticed that the victim shares the same name with an ill-fated character in Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe's masterpiece of maritime horror, The Narrative of Arthur Gordon. <laughs> Pen, which was like in 1837. So Poe's character, Parker, leads a mutiny on board the Grampus. When the ship is wrecked, he finds himself adrift with the novel's um, hero and two other characters. Just like the crew, the survivors are wrecked with hunger and reduced to following the custom of the sea. Unlike real life here, um, it is Richard Parker who proposes th- that lots be drawn. But in an eerie anticipation of actual events, it is then Parker who draws the short straw and ends up being eaten by his companions. And then 40 years before Poe's novel, another sailor called Richard Parker also met a violent end. One of the ringleaders of the naval mutiny at the Nore in 1797. This Parker was subsequently hanged from the yardarm, 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 yardarm <laughs> of the HMS sandwich. Uh, Poe named his um, mutineer after this historical figure, while author Jan Martel's Richard Parker in The Life of Pi arguably channels all three precursors. <laughs> precursors my God, to evoke both the spectacle of cannibalism and the um, mutinous impulses in the body which drive us to such repulsive acts. Hmm. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on crazy. it? Like, hmm. Murder? Not murder? Well, it's well, hard to because I don't know. chances are he could have lived if, they, if he was still alive and the, they saw the boat. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was like not that many more days later. No, but, but they didn't know that. No, no they, didn't. Yeah, they didn't know that. Yeah, true. Yeah, I don't know. And also, uh, they could have just said he already died. They could have. 100%, you but know. they told the truth. Yeah. I mean, right? I appreciate their integrity. Me too. You know. <laughs> <Me> too. <laughs> yeah, they were God-fearing men. But, uh, so yeah, yeah, I don't... Yeah, that's an interesting one, because it's not like our typical ones where it's, no. like... Just they maliciously, just went in, yeah, like, doing and, it. And attacked yeah. them. This is a, we were trying to survive. Yeah, like yeah. it's not like it was premeditated. Like there's just nothing. It was just kind of like a shit. We got to survive. It's kind of like the story of that plane that crashed in the in the Andes. I think. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Which yeah. Turned into say that. yeah. Where they ended up eating. They didn't kill anybody, but they definitely ate the dead bodies that yeah. were frozen. Yeah, I mean, so. if somebody's already dead, and it, I might, I might do it. Yeah, I might do it. <laughs> I don't know if I'm eating it raw, like yeah, on no. a boat. Like, can we get a grill over here? You know, <laughs> I think there's a lot of factors that go into making that decision. <laughs> I would agree with yeah. that. <laughs> oh my God. So that's uh, Richard's mates were shite. They were shite. Yeah. But they also had to deal oh, with his <laughs> shite. So, right? Oh, true. Because yeah. he did diarrhea. Because he did diarrhea all over the place. Yeah, poor, poor Richard. He was low man on the totem pole. I yeah. Know, and he was probably like, <laughs> poor guy. Help me, friends. And then they just stab him in the neck. Yeah. Right? Oh. Fuck, dude. And he only went probably because he was super poor yeah. and needed yeah. money. And it was his first time. On the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nope. No thanks. Mm. So that was an interesting one. Yeah, that's that one. All right, Brandon, wow. you ready? I'm ready. Yeah, B, what's yours? All right, all right, Brandon Linus. <laughs> all right. I laugh every time you speak. <laughs> I don't it's know why I call him that. It's, it's so, so stupid. It's so cute. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, I don't right, even Brand- remember Brand- why you started saying no, that. I call him Brandon Linus, Brandolini. What else do I call you? Ass hole. Oh, okay. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> that's maybe true. Um, <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, what's your what's yours again? What's the second title? That the you second had? title I have was Never Trust a Stranger, which I think is just a good motto to have. That's, that's smart. That's also yeah. Fair, like yeah. people should earn your <laughs> right? trust, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. So this I don't is, trust anybody. <laughs> I mean, no, no, yeah, no, no, yeah, nope. Which I think has come because we did trust people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think as you get right. older, you get you man that wisdom starts to come because of experience. If you get bit, suck. nah. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm not a good person to bite either because no. I am not nice. No, you're not. No. I mean, you are, but not no, when I you've am. been burned. No, yeah. and I try, listen, I give a lot and a lot and a lot, but if you fuck with me too much, no. <laughs> I'm not very nice about it. No, but you're not. Or if you fuck with other people. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> On that note, Brandon. Right. <laughs> so this is a story that is, um, I've heard it before, so it wasn't new to me, but I forgot about it. So I'm interested. interested to see if you're going to remember this one, because we watched a show about it once. But Oh, okay. Yeah, so on June 1st, 1989, Joan Rogers and her two, two daughters, Michelle and Christy, were on vacation in Florida from a small rural town in Ohio. Yep, this was a Dateline or something. It was. I can sure. already tell. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. They were a family of dairy farmers. Um, so they were, that sentence just sounds so strange. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Are we back in 1884? They were. 1989. I know, but, but they were. A dairy farmers. Dairy farmer family. Yeah, no, they were. Anyway. Um, Seafaring dairy farmers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like this. I, I right. like where it's going already. Right. Right. This is great. So the family was on vacation, um, except for Joan's husband, Hal. He decided to stay back um, because being that they had a farm. It's church time. It let's, is church let's, time. Let's have a moment. Do we need to have Jesus. a moment Everyone's of silence? silence. <laughs> right. Everyone, uh, just a, a second of silence for Jesus. Done. All right. Done. Just one <laughs> quick second. Luckily, it's one, so it'll just be. I love it. I love it. Right. So I, this makes me miss New York. I know it does. <laughs> Um, so Hal decided to stay back because as a dairy farmer, you work 24 seven every single day of the year. Yeah. No days off on the farm. No, no, no days off on the farm. Is it done? Yeah. Cause it's Amen. one. So only uh, one. Oh man. Okay. Thank God it's not 12. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Keep going. So just days prior as they packed up their car and made the trek down to Florida, making stops in various towns along the way. Um, and on June 1st, they left Orlando to their next destination, which is Tampa, Florida. Of course. Which I didn't remember that being here, are, which I thought was interesting. Back in Tampon, Florida. We are back right. in Tampon. Yo, so, speaking yeah. of tampons, you guys have so many tampons in this office. We do, yeah. We, we, do. we um yeah, something that we do at our agency is we we buy all of the It's amazing that you do it. Yeah. I just there might be yeah. more tampons here than there are in my actual There's office right now. Yeah, <laughs> and we actually do each team member's preferred um, product God. so they can just tell us what they yeah. want. That's, wow. That is yeah. called Good management. Yeah, so that's I mean, good great. bosses. Yeah, Should wow. Be. They shouldn't have to. It's called working for a here. millennial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. No, right. it's pretty great. Yeah. But yeah, that's why it's in the bathroom. Yeah. All right. So they're anyway. in Tampa. They're in Tampa. So where we have loads of tampons. Yeah. <laughs> in our bathroom. You can get a tampon in Tampa. Um, <laughs> the girls were um, um, excited uh, because after a quick check in at their motel, they were going to be headed right to Bush Gardens for a fun day um, at the amusement park. Mm. So. However, uh, Joan eventually got lost on their way to find the motel. Um, so pulling over to check uh, her map, she was a little surprised to see a man approach her car because she stopped at a gas station. Um, the man asked if uh, they were lost, noticing that uh, they had an Ohio license plate. So um, he decided to help the ladies, um, and the man wrote down directions on um, to their motel on a brochure uh, for Clearwater before he um, invited them on a sunset cruise on his boat. No. No, man. Yeah. So, no. No. You do not get on <laughs> no, boats no. Exactly. with strangers. So don't trust a stranger. So being that the ladies were on vacation, they thought, why not? And they decided to accept his offer God. pretty excitedly. Yeah. Yeah. These are the moments where you decide not to do yes. this. Exactly. Yeah, like, exactly. I don't know you. Or that's the moment that you go back to when you're about, you're in danger and you're mm -hmm. like, why the fuck did I do that? Stranger uh -huh. danger. You know? yep. yeah. Stranger danger. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that evening, the ladies made their way to the boat launch that he uh, told them to meet them at. Um, and what the ladies didn't know that this would be the last time that they'd ever step on solid ground to get. Oh my God. That's, that's devastating horrible. when you I think know. about it. And you it say is. it like that. It is. I know, right? Ugh. Yeah. So I decided for this one to just jump right into who the man was instead of extending the what story. What was his name again? Well, that's what oh, I was so, about oh, to get sorry. into. So. Who was this man, <laughs> you might ask? Whose man's is this? <laughs> <laughs> I literally have it's my really funny. So who was right this on cue. Literally um, says who was this man. And, but I don't even have his full name in here. Anyways, so born on October 11th, 1946, um, Oba Chandler was the fourth child of Oba Chandler Sr. and Margaret oh. Johnson um, mm -hmm. in Cincinnati, Ohio. Never trust an Oba. Nope. So named after his father, Ob Oba was only 10 years old when his uh, dad died by suicide um, in 1957, hanging himself in the basement of their home. The family of Oba Sr. Uh, blamed it on Margaret because of 
of course, it would be the the wife. Uh, what? Hmm. Didn't he choose to do that? Yeah. Okay. Well, he hung himself, but the family decided to blame it on the on uh, Margaret, saying that she killed him. Um, and Margaret ended up blaming it on Oba Jun. Uh, Onya, Oba Senior. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oba Senior's <laughs> death. I know. Junior. There's too many. There's, I know. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Hillary got it right. She knew what I was talking about. Hillary knows. So Margaret blamed it on Oba Junior uh, for his behavior, behavioral issues uh, because during his childhood, it was known that Oba was not the easiest child, um, and he often acted out at school. So after his father died, Oba's destructive nature only got worse, um, starting with his first arrest at 14 for stealing a car. Um, by the by, the time he was 18, he was arrested around 20 times for various reasons, like stealing, which included multiple cars, uh, the possession of counterfeit money, um, and even arrested for masturbating while peering into a woman's window. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So he was, oh, he, was, junior. he was a great dude. Oh, um, he how, had some issues, clearly. Yeah. However, it wasn't the end of it. As he got older, his crime started to expand into more serious crimes like burglary, um, armed robbery, and multiple sexual assaults. Um, and then I did see at one point um, he and his, he and a friend um, uh, broke into a couple's home and robbed them at gunpoint, mm. which progressed to him telling his friend to tie up the man with wires from a speaker in the room. And then Oba uh, took the woman into uh, her bedroom where he made her strip her clothes while he tied her up and rubbed a revolver across her stomach. Wow. Oh. Right. They both survived, though. Um, nobody was killed and that was the extent of what I've Can you read just from say that. what you wrote right Oh, there. yeah, I wrote fucking creep. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I put my, like, creep. actual, like... I know, I love it. Yeah. Uh, like, but, at what point, if you, like, go to jail over 20 times, are you just, like, we're just going to keep you You should in just here. stay there. You know yeah. what I mean? There's obviously yeah. like, an issue. Think about all the things they could have prevented oh, if 100%. they were just yeah. locked up. I agree. Yep. Yeah. Oba. Yeah. Fucking Oba. Junior. Yeah, right. Well, over the years, Oba jumped around from different cities dating various women... Um, and overall having eight children with seven different women. Um, and okay. he was oh. obviously known as some kind of a player, um, often da- dating multiple women at once. Was he even, was he cute? I mean, he just looked like a, your typical dude in the 80s. And he's from Ohio. From Ohio. And his family was also from Ohio. Yeah, I think so. Mm. What are the odds? Oh, that's right. interesting. Maybe that's why he was right. like, mm. well, and I, I actually took that note out in the beginning, but when um, he noticed the license plate, he did relate to them in the mm. fact that he was from Ohio, of he too. Did. Yeah. Right. Sure. Um, so by the time he was 41 in the late 80s, um, Oba was in Tampa, uh, married to a woman named Deborah Whiteman, um, had a daughter, and he started his own aluminum business. He bought a house and a blue and white 21-foot bayliner boat. Hmm. Yeah. So from what I read, um, he loved being on the open water. It was a place for himself to be free, alone, and away from the pressures of life and a new baby. Okay, I, could, I could get that. I oh, guess. right. Yeah. 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 yeah like, oh, there's that. a baby on yeah. land. I'm out. Like, fuck it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Responsibility. He's no like, thanks. Get me away <laughs> from all of this. Um God. And the great part is that Oba realized this um, opportunity it brought um, to continue... Uh, I, I, sometimes I read the things I write. And I'm like, this, I feel like it doesn't make sense. Anyways, he realized it was a great opportunity um, to continue his pr- uh, promiscuous lifestyle. So, and he uh, would lure women onto his boat um, and, and eventually try to sleep with them while they were on his boat. Yeah, using it as like a... I think already the moral of the story for anyone is if somebody's trying to lure you onto their boat, Don't just go no. Yeah. Like no. use reputable tour companies. Yeah, you would be yeah. surprised at how many things we interrupt on a boat. Uh-uh. Yeah. Oh like, can God. you give examples? Yeah. Can you give examples? Yeah. So uh, this this was here actually. We had stopped. There was like a pontoon boat like anchored, and we're like, oh, like let's do a quick boarding real sure, quick. So sure. we go on board, and our whole purpose is just check safety gear, and make yeah. sure you're good to go. Totally. This man's did not have pants on. Oh. oh he had a towel, is. but his wife was like one one minute, and I'm like, yo, for real? Like, <laughs> no, come no, on. I'm like, talking. I'm like yeah. hanging off our boat, like. Oh my God. I'm like, are you good? Like, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Or like people that like men, where you're like, I'm pretty sure that's not your spouse. Like oh, yeah. we've interrupted some of that. They get real upset. Oh well, yeah. Yeah, but I'm also like, dude, fuck off. You right. know, like yeah. people I suck. Like, you know, people do suck. <laughs> people <guess>. suck. <laughs> well, let's let's go get some. Let's uh, go get sexy on the water. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oba would not like. Like you guys. I get it, but like not around other people. No, you know right. what I mean. But I I feel like that's a thing for people. 
is like a fantasy to be like, ooh, yeah, you know, like, oh, yes. I don't know. It just, I'm, it makes me feel weird. Oh, no, for sure. <laughs> I'm not trying to be in your bedroom. <laughs> right. No, oh, no. Right. no. I'm just doing my job. Yeah. yeah <laughs> like, just let me see your life jackets. I'm going to get the fuck yeah, out of here. I just, that's all I need. I don't yeah. need to see all this other stuff. No, yeah. put your butt yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> put that booty away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Jeez>. Gross. <laughs> oh, people are fun. Now we get to May 14th, um, 1989. That's my mom's birthday. <gasps> Yeah, oh, Pam. Yeah, does Pam still listen to the podcast? Uh, she might listen to this one. All right, good. Yeah, I'm gonna tell Hi, her Pam. to listen to this one. Yeah, Pam. Yeah, I haven't seen you Mom. since I was like. T- mm. It's been a minute. Like I think I was 23. Yeah. It's a while oh ago. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she'd That's love to see you though. She I would love. I love her. Oh. <laughs> and Sam, your sister. Yeah, she. She's also. Big fan of you guys. She listens <gasps> okay. to you religiously. <laughs> I always thought Sam looks like Celine Dion. She does. Yeah. I know she does. I, know. I love her. Yeah, Hi, she Sam. loves you guys. Yeah, she's going to be so thrilled. I know. Yeah, so I love it. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. All those in Colorado. Hello. Colorado. <laughs> um, okay, Brandon. All right, May so 14. back to May 14th, 1989. <laughs> Um, when um, Oba um, met two women at a 7-Eleven in Madeira Beach, Florida. I really hope they got some slushies. You know, I, I did not see any reports on that. But Darn. Okay. When the slushie come out? Hopefully in the 1980s. You know? Right. I don't know. Probably yeah. about that time. I feel mm-hmm. like I've seen some shows that they had like slushies in the 1980s. Oh, yeah, for sure. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Um, so he ended up meeting two women named Judy Blair and Barbara uh, Mottram, I'm so bad with names. Anyways, um, uh, they were there in the area um, on vacation from Canada. Oh, from Canada. Yeah, Canada. Love that. So in this meeting, um, Oba introduced himself as uh, Dave Posno um, and told them that he owned an aluminum business in Bradenton and a boat uh, that he eventually then again invited him in, invited them on. Uh, Gosh, <laughs> they invited him on the next morning. You're so cute. I know. I hate reading, and it's all my notes. And I'm as I read, I'm like, oh, I misspelled a lot in here. <laughs> um, I even misspelled his name a few times. Um, it's it's literally three you letters. Have, you have Obi, and I have Obi, <laughs> Obi, and Obo. I just saw. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, so, um, hoping to interest um, the both of them, he was a little disappointed um, when only Judy accepted his offer. And the next morning, they got on his boat and took off. Uh, for Judy, this trip was pretty uneventful, and Oba didn't really try anything with her. Um, however, some came to think that nothing happened since he knew that Barbara would be expecting her back. Um, so as they docked that day, Oba decided to offer another sunset trip with um, them that evening, hoping to get a second chance. So that evening um, so that evening came, and to his surprise, Barbara didn't show up, um, and it was just the two of them again. Uh, this time, however, um, Oba didn't want to hold back. So starting with getting a little frisky, Oba started to uh, touch and hug Judy um, and talking to her about how he wanted to have sex with her, all of which Judy politely declined, which only made Oba more mad, um, and he only proceeded to take advantage of her. So she begged him not to. She even told him that she was a virgin, which only made him more excited. That is like the worst which thing is, to say. Yeah, when I, read that, when I read that, I was like, yeah, you don't want to say that because this like, dirtbag is going to be like, attracted to that even If more. someone was like trying to do that to me, I would be like, not the virgin thing, but I'd be like, I might have something you might not want. Like, yeah, right. I actually, yeah. you know. I would, I would be like, I'll suck your dick and I'd bite it off. Oh. That's what I'd do. Yeah. yeah, fuck you. Yeah, sorry, like, mom. That's disgusting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Um, but <laughs> th- th- this is, I, I do not understand. This is something I don't get. I, in, uh, just in men, how being told that I'm a virgin would turn them on more. Well, it's just like I ju- them saying no, and it turns well, him on even more. They're predators. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. they're pedophiles. They're just like, I don't get, mm. I just, like, well, yep. ugh, ugh. yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's gross. Yeah, that's not it. Yeah, no. and it was even quoted um, later that he said, "Is sex worth losing your life over?" To her, uh, to get her to do it. Yeah, no. <laughs> Predator indeed. <laughs> yeah. Like, so what the fuck. Yeah. So then he proceeded to pin her down and sexually assault her, um, and then after the assault, he got up and headed back to shore. Um, and there were some notes that said like his demeanor changed and he started throwing up off the boat and people were like, is it because he was ashamed of it or because of the adrenaline of it happening? Um, so he ended up getting up to shore uh, where he had her jump out of the boat and swim to the beach as he drove away 
to go to a different location. Bye, bitch. Yep. I'm out. Yeah. I'd have jumped overboard before. Right, right. right. I, I probably would have done the same. And so the next morning, Judy ended up calling the police and, report, and reporting the, uh, the assault. Um, luckily, she was able to give the police a full account of what happened and what he looked like. Uh, however, they were not able to collect any forensic evidence um, because she was in the water uh-huh. and then she yeah. washed, uh, she took a shower before she went in, uh, which I probably would have done the same thing yeah. to be like, Agreed. whatever. So um, so then two weeks later, uh, Oba meets Joan Rogers and her two daughters. Uh, so this brings us back to the beginning of the story. How old were her girls again? They were... They were teenagers. They were teenagers. Uh, I usually yeah. put their ages in here and I I'm didn't this sure time. I'm pretty sure if I remember the story correctly, I think they were like 12, 12, 13. Oh my God. Yeah, they were pretty young. They were, yeah. they were young. I think they might have been a little bit older, but I could take a quick look in a second. I thought second. they were under 16. I, yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah. Um, so once Joan, Michelle, and Christy got to the boat, uh, the boat dock that evening, Oba was obviously thrilled um, and took off quickly. So once Oba felt like they were a good distance um, into the bay, uh, he decided he was prepared to attack. So he um, bound their wrists, and this is a little bit of trigger warning, but he bound their wrists um, behind their backs with yellow rope and put duct tape over their mouths before he sexually assaulted them. And a lot of reports I saw said that People think that he only covered their mouth so that he could see like their the, the pain on their faces. So after the assault, um, he wrapped a rope around their necks um, that had a 30-pound uh, concrete block mm. attached to the end of it. No. Um, he left them naked from the waist down, and he pushed each of them overboard one by one, still alive. Yeah, oh, that just gave me goosebumps. Oh, that's fucked. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. terrible. Like, that's, that, it's one thing to kill somebody, but to... Push them overboard. Well, because they all drown. Yes, yeah. and they all drown. It's a yeah. quick thing. No, yeah. no, it's Jesus it's Christ. it's horrendous. What a trash yeah. human being. Right. So, was this the first time that he like went to killing though? We'll get there. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm always jumping ahead. You no, always sorry. are. Okay. Um. So because of the decom uh, decomposition process. Um, in the warm waters of the Tampa Bay, because the Tampa Bay gets really warm. Bloat. Yep, the bodies didn't Bloat. last underwater for too long because they started to fill with gas. Um, and three days later, on June 4th, uh, the three bodies were discovered by the Coast Guard floating hmm. floating in various different parts of Tampa Bay. Oh, jeez. So, um, however, when they um, got the bodies, because they did not have any clothing from the waist down, they couldn't identify the bodies because they had no form of identification on them. So soon into their investigation of uh, who the bodies were, the police re- received a call from the motel um, that the ladies were staying at. A maid at the hotel said that they that there were three women staying there that they haven't seen in a few days. Um, when the police investigated the motel, um, they heard of the names of Joan, Michelle, and Christy. Finding the information on Joan's husband, they called him, um, and the police asked for the ladies' dental records, which confirmed that it was the Rogers family. So the police started their investigation into the murderer, uh, which started to uh, to prove to be a little bit difficult because the ladies were in the water for so long. It washed off a lot of the bi- biological evidence that could have been on the bodies, uh, whether that was hair, clothing fibers, fingerprints, or even semen. Um, I love how you spelled semen as like I semen. I did. I see as in semen. Yeah. yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> And I love that you just look at my notes. I, I misspell so I'm much. literally just following it. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> you always do. I always see your eyes on it. <laughs> so that was um, until uh, lead detective Jim Kappel um, saw a monthly bulletin from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement where he learned of a story of a woman who was assaulted on a boat in Madeira Beach. Mm. So looking into the attacker, Dave Pon- po- Posno, um, he felt like he came to a dead end when he couldn't find any records of that name in the Tampa Bay area. So taking a trip to Canada to meet with Judy and Barbara, Detective Capel uh, questioned the two and asked, um, and he was asking for a more complete overview of what happened, including a description of the attacker uh, to create a composite sketch. Mm. So once they can spot the once the sketch was um, was mm. hit in the media in November, it quickly became a big uh, it became a pretty big news story. Uh, one that Oba wanted to avoid at all costs. So packing up, he jetted right out of Tampa back up to Cincinnati. And not even telling his wife that he was leaving. He just like he what just left. Fuck? Yeah. Oh, and his child. Yeah. Yeah. What a piece of trash. Yeah, what a shit bag. Right. Well, speaking of his children, uh, when he got to Ohio, he ended up meeting with one of his daughters, mm. um, Crystal, and her husband Rick Mays, uh, who was in the area. And in this meeting, Oba decided to confess to them that the police were after him for assault and murder. Like, oh, great. Like, like, okay. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. 
Please? <laughs> yeah, Hi. right. Hi. Yeah, I'm, so, I don't give a fuck who you are. I'd be right. like, <laughs> yeah. Wow. So uh, Crystal wow. quickly called Oba's current wife, Deborah, who also started having some suspicions about Oba after noticing that the composite sketch looked awfully familiar. Um, however, for some reason, um, Oba decided to go back to Florida um, right after Thanksgiving, um, and all of Deborah's suspicions went away after Oba let her know that he had no part in any of it. Okay. So she just believed him. No, okay. From my research, yeah. So from here, hmm. Oba knew uh, that he had to leave the state of Florida for good, um, leaving the majority of their belongings in their Tampa home. They got in the car and started driving to California. Um, however, it was very short-lived, um, and nobody quite knows how long or how far they got, um, but eventually they ended up making their way back to Tampa. And I didn't really see much about like what happened in that time or why. Um, but from here, Oba would eventually land a job from May to September in 1991 as an informant for the U.S. Customs and Tampa Police Departments. What? Yeah. So he okay. would go out and he would help them f find murderers and, and solve crimes and all that shit. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> however, by 1992, Oba uh, once again decided to leave the Tampa area and ended up in Port Orange, Florida, which is on the opposite coast mm. by... Daytona. Um, so in this time, the detectives didn't stop their investigation, um, eventually searching Joan Rogers' car for more evidence. Um, and in this search, they found a brochure uh, for Clearwater Beach that had handwritten directions to the motel the family was staying at. Um, it also included uh, the fingerprints of Joan and a palm print that did not match anyone um, in the family. So from here, the police decided to analyze the handwriting and came to the conclusion that it was not written by any of the ladies that were uh, killed that day, and it must have been from the killer. So with this information, the police decided to do something that I find, especially because we were in advertising and marketing, uh, pretty interesting. Um, so since the T's and the Y's in the, the letter were written a very unique way, like I want to say the if a T was in the middle of a sentence, he put it, he made it a capital T. Mm -hmm. um, in the Y, there was like four different ways he would write the letter Y. Hmm. Uh, so um, they thought, why not get the handwriting um, sent out to the masses to see if anyone could recognize the handwriting? Um, so they acquired billboards throughout Tampa Bay that they created signs that stated, who wrote these directions? You may know who killed the Rogers family. $25,000 reward. They put that's this genius. on a billboard? On billboards, yeah, yes. Yeah, with a picture of the handwriting symbol, Damn. which I have in here to me is a genius way to get the message out, especially yeah. because there was no social media. There was no, inter like, well, there was internet, but there wasn't, it wasn't what it yeah. is today. Like, the easiest way for them to get out to a large audience was billboard. And if you yeah. Google it, I'll it add it into the, the highway. Oh, yeah. well, H Media. Yep. That's great. And <laughs> I'll add it into the creative for the episode, but there was multiple different billboards that it was and on. And the billboards around Tampa Bay have been here since then. Yeah. So, I mean, there's newer digital ones, but like the yeah. older ones have been here for, for a, while, a long time. Yeah. In this, like, marketing strategy they did um it ended up working so in may of 1992 a woman who recognized the same handwriting from a contractor she hired um noticed that they had the same unique handwriting as the billboard um so that contractor ended up being oba chandler so on september 24th 1992 um oba was arrested at a gas station near his home in volusia county florida um, unfortunately for detectives, Oba had sold his boat three months after the murder, so they weren't able to search it for more evidence. However, um, they had a match in the palm print on the Clearwater brochure. And Oba was identified as the rapist who attacked Judy Blair when she was shown a photo of him. Um, and by November 10th, Oba was indicted by a Pinellas County grand jury for three counts of first-degree murder. Good. Yeah. The trial state, uh, started on September 19th, 1994, and from the beginning, Oba denied all allegations, stating that he helped them with the directions, but he never saw them again until um, he saw them on the news. Mm -hmm. yeah. What a bitch. Right. Mm -hmm. However, Poor. there was many who testified to prove him wrong, and a few was um, with Judy, um, who told um, told the courts her interactions that day, that um, how he brought her on the boat and what happened and um, everything that happened to her. And then a coworker, uh, Rollins Cooper, uh, told the courts that Oba bragged to him. Ooh, I just spit all over this mic. That's gross. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> right? And nobody would have known that but me. So you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just pretend it didn't happen. Anyways, um, so he told the courts that um, Oba bragged to, him, bragged to him about a date he had with three women's the day after the murder. Um, and then Crystal, his daughter, told the courts 
um, her account of when he came to her home and admitted to the police, admitted that the police were after him for the killings. And the, wow. Yeah. Back up. He had dates with three women. That was a woman and two children. Yes, exactly. So, exactly. Mm. Gross. After the court finished, it was pretty evident to the jury that Oba was guilty of the murder. Um, and on September 29th, 1994, he was found guilty on all three counts of first degree murder. And all 12 jurors voted that Oba be sentenced to death. And you had said earlier about something about his daughter, right? His daughter testified yeah, against yeah. him? Against him, yeah. Okay. Well, to say that she... Um, like he confessed to her. This is what he said to me yeah, when he yeah. came to see us. Um, so um, one juror even stated um, he scared some of the jurors when he would sit there and stare at you and have that stupid grin on his face. He would make your skin crawl, which I thought was interesting. Hmm. So throughout the rest of Oba's time, he would continue to deny the murders and um, he would appeal the death sentence repeatedly, all of which did not go through. And on November 15th, 2012, Oba was served his final meal of two salami sandwiches on white bread with mustard and a cup of coffee. And Ew. He, right? <laughs> it's disgusting. Uh, and he wrote down his last uh, statement because he didn't want to say it out loud, which said, you're killing an innocent man today. And at 4.08 p.m., right? So 4.08 p.m., Oba was executed by lethal injection at the Florida State Prison of Railford, Florida. And all I got to say is... Lethal injunction. 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 Lethal. injunction. <laughs> What's your function? <laughs> um, God. No, but that, like, that compared to tying people. Yeah. Up they should have just tossed them yeah. over the side. Eye for an yeah. eye. I don't know. That's yeah. like, yeah. yeah. Or just Which we had a whole, I think, I feel like we had a whole conversation about, like, the debate of, like, um, capital punishment, right? Yeah. I think in general. Yeah. A few go ahead and uh, your Oba, yeah. just take a long walk up a short pier, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> Get out of yeah, here. Well, we don't need you. Yeah. Yeah. So, interesting. Interesting. Um, interesting. What's weird is he only had three murders, like not yeah. like a history of murder. But just, I wonder, I mean, that was the eighties. Like yeah. how many were well, unaccounted for? Like how many? So I have an interesting know. fact. Oh. Do tell. Oh. Right. So Goodness. many believe that Oba murdered before, mm. um, including a woman named, and I'm going to do so bad at this. Um, I've. L- Ivelisse. Ivelisse Barros. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I'm so bad with names. Burgessy? I am so bad. Yeah. So okay. um, so she had a similar death to the Rogers family in Coral Springs, Florida. Mm. Um, and at the time, the DNA samples that were taken, um, the technology wasn't that great. Oh. Um, and so they couldn't really tell who what happened and they couldn't identify um, who it was. Mm-hmm. But eventually when the tech got better, they were able to t- um, retest the DNA um, and they found it a positive match to Oba. So... There's chances so he that didn't he go did from this. zero to a hundred. Yeah. He so chances he probably was doing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, and to the to to the degree where the Florida cold case detectives have been advised that if they're investigating any case that happened within that time period, uh, that they should look into where Oba was living at the time because chances it could be him. Hmm. So he's like yeah. a fucking serial killer. Re- technically, he is if because that's three. Yeah, he killed three. three. Yeah. 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 Um, wasn't wasn't it a mom, a daughter, and her friend? No, it was a mom and two daughters. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm also, I'm confusing it with some murders that were California yeah. in the mountains when it was a mom, a daughter, and a friend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the only, the, the last fact I have was at first the police thought it could have been their father, Hal. They thought it was weird that the ladies were supposed to be home three days before he called the police that they were missing. Mm. Um, uh, the detectives also felt like he was really cold about it all. Uh, like he wasn't very emotional when they told him that they were dead. His response was that he didn't have time to be emotional, that he had a farm to run. Yeah. Yeah. He said, (laughs) he said he didn't farm his life. Yeah. He said he did what he had to do to function and not to worry about anything else. However, he had an alibi because he didn't like to cook. So there was a number of people who saw him at a couple different restaurants throughout that day. I mean, a, I mean, think about that, though, because if he had not done that, then his alibi would be shit. And yeah. mm-hmm. they probably would have looked into it. Yeah. yeah. That is so mm. interesting. Yeah. It's interesting that he denied that he said he was innocent till the end, because I feel like a lot of the times with the serial killers, they're like, once they get to the end of it, they're like proud. They're of proud it. of it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's really, really interesting. Like, also, let's talk about the last meal. Right? Yeah. Salami. Yeah, that's right? Disgusting. Like, With yeah. I'm not blowing yeah. my last meal in salami no. sandwiches. No. Prison salami, too? No. Yeah. Thanks, oh. No. Which is mustard. And bread and coffee. And coffee? <laughs> yeah. Like, what? Uh-uh. Brother, right? Ooh. 
That is that one's really interesting. That's gross. Yeah, yeah, I do remember hearing about this one. Um, I and think it was a da- it must have been a Dateline or a twenty. There was a forensic was, files on it. Was it a forensic files? But there, I'm <laughs> sure there was a Dateline. Uh, there was a few files. that came out after this, just because yeah. it's a such a it's a very it's a, a more well known case than we typically do. Yeah, forensic it's files, just, man. That I, that started when I met you. Mm. I think I watched it then. Yeah, we just like I murder. Love. It's just <laughs> fascinating. It is, <laughs> which is awful. But, but yeah, I mean. That's that was an interesting story. Both yeah. murders at sea. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of murder. Yeah. And if there's not murder at sea, there's a lot of murder that goes into the sea because oh, they're yes. like, mm, yeah. yeah. Let's just dump it here. Did you, there was a there was something. I think it was like two years ago. The body that was found in the in Tampa Bay, that was floating. There was a girl that was found. Oh, maybe in that like was a, St. Pete's AOR. How long ago? Within the last year since i've been here oh so and they, they like identified found tattoos her in right? like a bo- like a bag oh my oh. god yeah they found like and i and i i do not know all the facts of this i just <laughs> yeah. know that what i heard on the radio yeah. and it yeah. was that a girl a girl's body i don't know how old was found mm. in a duffel bag or a, some sort of bag which she didn't put herself floating in floating yeah. Yeah. out in the uh um, out somewhere god. around st petersburg it's interesting that people dump a lot of bodies in the just in the ocean in yeah. general yeah because yeah. like how far how how far can you conceivably go out in the water on a normal boat i mean it depends on how big it is you know with yeah. like fuel range or if you have a sailing boat or whatever well, if you're yeah, on a sailboat you can go you can wherever, go wherever the, the wind will take you but yeah. <laughs> it's wow. just like and it's easy to be undetected on the water yeah. especially yeah. if you're kind of like a loner mm. and like bodies you know like you can get rid of them. Like, I'm not trying to be all weird, but like, oh, yeah. they do bloat, but there are things that people yeah. do to them to make them not bloat, you know, or that if they do, the gas goes away, yeah. you know, like, yeah. if you disperses. Wait it down enough, yeah. No, or, you poke holes in it. Oh, yeah. my God. That's uh, just, yeah, just to have yeah. it all released. We are not yeah. here to, yeah, my mind people. went to, no, 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 <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, yeah. like, if you think but about, it's reality of it. right, and then you have things that can eat them yeah. and evidence just disappears. So. I feel like that is probably, likely in general right like mm-hmm. a lot of sea i'm sure aquatic life would eat oh yeah, yeah. i would think yeah. yeah 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 i've seen things get eaten very quickly oh by sea life oh, that's terrifying in a very <laughs> short amount of time where you're like oh my god what's the sea life is it like sharks <laughs> crabs fish Whoa. sharks oh interesting you would be surprised at like all those little fish yeah peck yeah so Oh my God. So did yeah. you guys see that video of the kid who was like on a graduation boat or something? And they and they dared him to jump in. They dared him to jump and then and he, he jumped and it, he was never seen again. Yeah. And it was like in, oh, in New Orleans wasn't waters. It? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So okay, so Hillary, mm-hmm. Coast Guard. If somebody were to jump off of a cruise ship like that, so in that video you could see that there was I think that you could see there was something in the water. Yeah. That like it came looked up like and got it. him. But yeah. even like I've seen people throw something from a big ship like that into the water and immediately like all of a sudden there's a whole bunch of shit eating it. Mm. So if this in this case and with this guy jumping off of the like what what an idiot um, jumped off of the this cruise ship into the water and mm-hmm. there was clearly something in the water with yeah. him and he was just gone. Well, I mean, the odds of things just like being there, I feel like are pretty slim. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So like. It's just like you ought, like if you just assume that like if you jump in the water just for funsies that yeah. something's gonna immediately eat you. Like, I, I do feel that. But I'm not what lie. people do. don't realize is like when boats are moving and like you go under alongside a hole, there is there's water moving and yeah. things under there. So he could have landed weird. He could have choked. He could have done. Yeah. I don't know. And do. Oh, that was that. creepy. That was interesting. <laughs> what? Um, but but you can get sucked underneath on a big cruise ship, right? Like mm-hmm. if you get in the water, you can get sucked underneath the yeah, hole. Yeah, it's like right? super dangerous. Like and then like go the through side. the propeller. Props, yeah, potentially. That is yeah, terrifying. Ooh. I mean, all of it is terrifying. Yeah. So Listen, for anyone that's listening, if you're on a boat, stay on it. Okay, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> stay on it. Yes. Like, stay do not jump. Don't. Don't do it. And if you ever think you can swim to land, don't do that either. Oh, I'm not. Because it's yeah, always no. like way farther than you think. Yeah. And yeah. you will yeah. tire out and probably die and drown before you get there. So Wow. Mm-hmm. So this comes from uh, directly from someone who does this every day. Yeah. So <laughs> stay on the goddamn boat. Yeah. If yeah. you flip a boat, get on the hole, stay with it, stay together. Because you're really? more. Well, one, you're not in the water. So yeah. hypothermia. Oh, yeah. 
but and the, then what visibility. If the boat, what if the boat goes down? Like, what if it, if it fills and it's gone? Mm, then stay with your people. Oh it's God, a lot easier so to terrifying. find a group of people than it is to find one. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is that the the ocean freaks me out so much. Mm-hmm. And that's well, and just why. drowning is like the I feel like is one of the worst ways to die. Yeah, you know, Molly I also and just I hate the idea of like not knowing what's beneath you. Yeah, yeah. Like, I agree with that. Ugh. It's disgusting to yeah. me. It literally gives me the heebie-jeebies. It's terrifying. Yeah. Like dark. I can't. There was a. I there. Was, okay. Outside of Roswell, there is the bottomless lakes. I don't know if you've ever gone there. What does Anna. that even mean? I don't no. know. But like, it's like a super. <laughs> I hate deep, the sound of that. I know. <laughs> right. Um, and I remember swimming in that and just thinking there are no. I did, like. Where does this go? I don't know. Yeah, I don't like any of it, like ever. But I there was. I used um, to as a kid swim in a lake, like we would do like inner tubing on this lake that was like, oh, yeah. you couldn't see your anything. Feet. Yeah. Like you couldn't even see it's your hands. Lake. It was yeah. so murky. And as a child, it was like fine. But once I started getting older, I was like, ew, no. what's under me? Like, yeah. I don't care if this isn't like super deep. It's still like, there could be dead bodies. There could be snakes. Oh like, I don't know. I just can't. Blech. Yeah. I just, that's like Naya Rivera. That, oh, that yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. I know. So I was so sad about that. Yeah, like that, even just the thought of, uh, I don't know. It like, takes nothing yeah. for you to yeah. drown. Like, no. if you yeah. choke, your body's like, hold up, and you're done. Like, you're done breathing. Yeah, see, and that, Ugh. yeah, that just. It's crazy. Oh, my God. Or you're trying to hold your breath, but your body forces you to breathe in. We had, mm-hmm. um, when was this, two or three weeks, three weeks ago? Uh, a 16-year-old from Canada was down here for a swim, mm-hmm. swim camp. Uh, down off uh, like Clearwater Beach, like Indian Rocks yeah, over there yeah. on my side, yeah, and drowned. Oh so we were God. like looking for his body oh at a swim God. camp, like that. that I just during practice. Oof. Yeah, that's awful. Yeah, it was not great. I just yeah, water. Mm-mm. So like, just Mm-mm. wear your life jackets. Like, if you have kids in the water, like. Watch them, put them on a leash. I don't know. Yeah. Stresses me out. I'm on a swim leash. <laughs> Stresses me out. No, that's, I mean, I'm sure the shit that you do. Okay. When I was in high school, um, and I, you probably took the same things. You're in the same district. Um, our health class had to go to CSU, I think is where we went. Um, and it was all about alcohol and drugs and like looking the at morgue. the impact. The morgue. Yeah, yes. We did it at a uh, McKee hospital that's, in Loveland. That's where we went. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah. You guys actually we went. went to the that, morgue. That yes. oh, to no. this day fucked me up. Me too. Like and I, I was like, we're fragile. Drink. We can die. <laughs> yeah. And I remember not drinking specifically because of one thing that I saw. And it was that picture of the guy who had flown off the boat and got his head got sliced in half by the propeller. Do you remember that? No, but I remember the guy that didn't have a face because his, he went through the windshield and oh God, smashed it on the winch. Too. Oh my gosh! Yeah, uh, yes, but it was it was a horrifying. We were, we were you children guys a lot like, in yeah. Colorado. Yeah, we were. Uh, it was high school. Was it ninth grade? I was yeah, like we sixteen. Didn't do that. Okay, maybe it was my our sophomore year. Maybe because yeah. we were you were in Thompson Wait, Valley. Valley, yeah. yeah. So we were in the same district. Yeah, they didn't yeah. do that in Connecticut. Ooh, it was yeah, rough. it messed me up though. Me too. I was, even now, I'm like, oh. no. I think about it all the time. It's probably why I'm weird about death. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably the same. I yeah. think about death a lot. Oh god. Yeah. Like in what way? Uh, like just yours, like or? how fast it can happen, how oh. easily it can happen. It's not like, like how fragile we are. It's not like you're thinking about death of others. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. More so like just I don't know. It's cr- it's crazy to me. Yeah. I feel like and as like I get older, so I think about it more too. That like. You're just like, yeah. it's like, okay, and then it's not in like a yeah. split second. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. oh my God. Every time yeah. I like find out a new way that you could die that I've never <laughs> thought about before. Like, you know, if you eat leftover rice, uh, uh, yeah, thanks you can get those. like this certain bacteria and just die. I'm like, every time I think about things like that, I'm like, oh yeah, we could just... Yeah. Yeah. Be out. I haven't had leftover rice in months because of that shit, you right. know, I but my whole it. life, think about like your whole young <laughs> adult life, rice. you've been, been eating, it. eating it cold, eating yeah, it right. microwaved yeah. again, like days yeah. later. Ooh, I'm, so, not, I'm not a leftovers person. So I it is, love definitely haven't, it is also <laughs> crazy to think like the reason we know things are bad for you and that can kill you now if it's something <laughs> poisonous is because somebody someone's died from at one point yeah. did. Yeah. Like how lucky are we at a point where we could be living and not have to worry about like, oh, is this going to kill me right this second yeah. <laughs> i mean yeah. you know what's interesting is that i there there's several things shootings there's i mean just all of it even when in new york i am very aware of my surroundings at all times like yeah. just if things get funky and i'm down in the subway i will move i will get out of a car and get into another like i'm pretty 
I'm like hyper aware. You and have I think to that pay that's attention. Why. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So people like, that are like balls deep in their phones, I'm like, look oh, around, yeah. <laughs> look around, see who's something. around you. Right. Yeah. It could, it, I don't know. Like I said, I don't trust anybody. Yeah. I assume everybody is up to some shady shit. Well, most people are. Yeah. Um, I think that's fair, but no, I'm the, I'm the same way looking for exits when you are yep. anywhere that you are just cause you just do not know. I mean, Pride happened recently, and we walked into Bradley's, and I'm like, I know exactly where the exits are. Yep. Yeah. I, I just, just also, like, I don't really like going out in big crowds anymore. Oh, yeah. yeah that's not my favorite Because people get, even movies, like, movie theaters make me uncomfortable, mm-hmm. well, and I'm just like, There's also nah. been a lot of mass shootings in the state of Colorado. Yeah, it doesn't help that um, I feel like Florida. any sort of, like, big thing is, like... Yeah. I don't know. Well, we, like, you got to remember, we grew up. I mean, Columbine happened when I was in eighth grade. I was grade. like six or seventh. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I, I remember that we went to the memorial. We went all of it. Like yeah. the next day. So, where, where you could see the windows blown out of the school and blood running down the building. Like it's, it's, it's fucked awful. up. Yeah. But then even the Aurora theater shooting happened in yeah. Colorado too. Yeah. It's craziness, but yeah, no, it's so quick that it's just like done. Yeah. 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 So just like, yeah. just be careful. Wear your life jackets. Don't get on boats with strangers and uh, like never get on a boat with a stranger no yeah. don't like, ever get on a boat I, with a stranger there i i don't get into a car with a stranger no, don't. And don't feel bad to say no i think saying no oh, is yeah. such a powerful thing yeah i'm in good general. Yeah. yeah with no yeah. explanation either <laughs> no no yeah no. No. no no thank you why just no yeah people that's be drugging it. people on boats like oh my god yeah what yeah it's crazy out there. I wouldn't even drug a person. Not Think on about a boat. how isolated all of it is. You can literally just get on a boat and you can be miles yeah. away from no one's going to hear you. Yeah. yeah. See no, you. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. So yeah, that and international dark orders. out. No, ma'am. I can't. Yeah. Nighttime is a little. Nighttime. It's the like it ha- there is like such a peacefulness to it, but I also agree. a very sketchiness to yes. it. Yeah. Like the nights when like the moon's out and mm-hmm. you can see peaceful, calm, yeah. gorgeous. When it's, not. when it's not, you're like, it is black as shit out here. Like, I don't. See, that is it's so terrifying that's, to me. Because yeah. you can't see anywhere. Know. You can't see up, down. Like, mm-hmm. Could you imagine over. being alone in the water? No. No. Just no. <laughs> like I would die, yeah. I think, the of, end of, the of a heart attack because yeah. I would be so scared yeah. that I would yeah. just be like done. Yeah. Yeah. Nighttime. Wow. What is that? What is that movie? Open Water? Yes. With the couple that gets that like left film. behind. Yeah. Which is based on a true story. Yeah. That's terrifying. Yeah. Which did they find them or no? Mm. I don't think they ever found them. Yeah. Oh my God. I think they got got. They got got <laughs> by them. Something sharks. got them. No, yeah. I think they were in shark infested waters. Yeah, yeah, which is also terrifying. Mm. If the, if that was the case um, for sharks, I don't know much about sharks, but in general, do they go after humans in a frenzy? Like mm, I don't know. They make it seem like okay. I, I just don't know. see. I hate all of this. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I like. Isn't mounds. it like I can't remember if it was sharks or alligators or crocodiles? I still don't know the difference between alligators and crocodiles, but (laughs) that thing of like, if you're bleeding at all, they'll come to you immediately. I feel like that's Is that sharks? Uh, I don't know. I feel like that's like any sort of like carnivorous water creature. But if I had to take my chances with a shark or a gator, um, give me the shark. Uh, see, I would yeah, I've heard that. the gators yeah. are like, no, thank you. No, no and they just grab on and just start second. spinning. Yeah, they'll just yeah. spin your ass. Yeah, yeah. we're mm. like, they're like, oh, sharks are curious. Well, you know, but like alligators, I, I want think they just want to kill you. None yes. of them. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. none of it. I don't, yeah. like, I love the water, but I don't like being in the water. Yeah, I'm not a water person. I don't, no. I fucking hate the just water, Just too much actually. stuff. Too many things. It's like people that are like, you want to go to the beach? And I'm like, no, I don't. Yeah. I don't go lay on a beach. Like, I just am not... And I don't want to swim where people are peeing around me. Like I'm just no. not into, I'm not into it. Like, no. Yeah. I'm yeah, like, I'm, take me to the mountains. I'm great there. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah. I don't mind the beach, but the beach is a process. It's it is like, a pro- like let's g- drive to the beach. Let's find parking at the yep. beach. Let's battle every other <laughs> asshole out here on the beach. Like it's also the bath. The bathroom situation is number one for me because yeah, I'm that's not why going, everybody pees in the water. Right? Exactly. You and know? I hate it and I don't. Yeah. I can't actually physically pee in water. Like, I cannot do it. I do not know why. If you were shipwrecked, I bet you would. I'm sure, I'm sure yeah, figure it out. Yeah. I'm sure at some point it would just, like, come if out. If you but had yeah. diarrhea in the bottom of the, the dinghy. You're getting voted off, all right? <laughs> we're eating you sure. first. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm pretty mean. Also, so. if we were on a boat, I would not eat either one of you. I would not I'll eat just either. let the let burn. the elements take me. I'm right. like, we're just going to You burn. can do what the you want with me afterwards, us. but. I'm not going to do I wouldn't do that either. No. I can't. I mean, obviously, I've never been in that position, but I could not fathom. No. Doing it. If somebody like did all the work for me, right? And I'm not talking about eating raw human. If they were like, 
right? The the plane crash situation. Sure. If yeah. someone sure. was like, "Hey, I barbecued this. I found it." I'd be like, "All right, okay." <laughs> I'm only. I don't want to know about it. And right. I'm I'm like that with most yeah. foods. Like, don't tell me what it is, but I'll try it. <laughs> you so. do know that, like, actually, just in the meat grinding and all this kind of shit process, that all of us have probably eaten some sort of human. That, oh yeah. my god! Flesh. What? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. People lose a digit. People lose oh. fingers and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Don't say that to me. <laughs> and these are the reasons why I tried to be a veg- well, vegan at one point and then ended it up did. crying. In I'm front gonna of have a, hot a dog mental stand. breakdown. <laughs> crying in front oh, of a hot, hot dog did. stand. New York City. Yeah, Brooklyn. Yep. We yeah. tried it for a month and we're very I, not good. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll try. I would probably try anything once. <laughs> Just don't tell me what it is. <laughs> I'm not that way. I can't do it. Brandon. I guess I never want to be in a, a place where I have to find that out. Yeah, or like make that decision. Yeah. You're like, mm-hmm. Yeah, no. no. And like you can go a very, very long time without eating. Mm-hmm. So like I'm water. good. That's yeah, right. Yeah, right. it's the water part. Yeah. So, yeah. That's just scary. And blood doesn't sound as good as just water. Okay, yeah, with my story where they're like, they've yeah. moistened their... <laughs> no. No, we had uh, we caught this big fish one time. I, did I show you the picture of that fish we caught? You did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that fish, they had they had the heart out, oh. and one of the one of the engineers on the boat, he was like, try a piece. And I, I did. And it was like so bloody <laughs> that oh. like I couldn't. Like I like gagged. I swallowed it, but I was like, <laughs> it was the blood for me. And I was like... It was because it tastes like metal. It it's was like very metal-y... irony. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but it was like also the warmth. That like yeah. bothered me. The warmth is and the oh. thickness. It was a lot. And oh. I was oh like, and he loved yeah. it. That was like oh his thing. God. Like he mess. was he was like from an island mm. originally mm. somewhere. Mm. So yeah. that was like his thing. Yeah. Mm. Not mine. No. <laughs> not mine. Yeah. But um. No, 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 no. That's fine. I am not adventurous. I can barely eat real meat. No, well, all meat's real, but I can barely eat. Well, like, you can't even touch raw chicken. No. It, I, oh my god. Yeah. I can't. I mean, I'll do it if I have to. Like when I was in New York by myself. I know I'm I proud of you. I grilled some chicken broth, but uh, <laughs> I can't, like, oh, my God, touching it. And then, like, knowing that, like, there's even times where I'm like, Brandon, did you wash your hands? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now I so get weird annoying, about raw meat, too. Yeah, I do. Like, it rinse it, wash it. Yeah. Oh, God. What would your last meal in prison be? That is a great, that is a really good question. I've never Not thought of myself sandwich. in prison, which is probably good. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Anna, what would yours be? I don't know. Maybe like all of my favorite foods don't make any sense together. So like <laughs> I would want like cheese fries with like bacon mm. and whatever, mm, but I would also delicious. want like ceviche. Oh, so yeah. I don't know how to make like, yeah, like a how, So you want well, a tapas how, like, a, Yeah, how accommodating <laughs> do you think they'd be? Be like, I want some cheese fries, but like also like a bowl of ceviche. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, and, and like a really good New tapas. York prime. Yeah, like right. something. Steak. Yeah. Some like yeah. barbecue chicken. Like how much are they yeah. willing to Some actually give asparagus. you? You know, yeah. I am not wasting my last meal on fucking, fucking asparagus. asparagus. <laughs> I, I love asparagus. Like I, I, I either, like but. asparagus, but it is not last meal vegetable <laughs> quality. Can I have a salad? No. Yeah, I don't no. know I'll tell you right now. Um, the only vegetable that I would eat last meal would be like potatoes in some form. Sure, yeah. like, right. a, like a potatoes and onion and like pepper. I don't know, but like fry for him, mashed for him. Yeah, I would want. I probably want like. I would definitely have a whatchamacallit. Oh my god, they're so good. Everyone the knows what those are. Mean? Oh my god. It's a chocolate bar, bar that either. Kevin didn't know about either. Okay. <laughs> Anna, did you know do you know what a whatchamacallit is? No. Oh it my god. It is a very it's underrated a chocolate bar. Can you I tell use, <laughs> So you've got to tell us cuz I don't think I any did. of us grew up with that at no, all. No, and I mean I don't know if I necessarily grew up with it, but it was in the vending machines at high school and I would get it and it's like this like chocolate bar, it's like a wafer with like peanut in it and stuff. Mm. It's 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 delicious. I don't even know how to explain it. It's besides like, that. it's like, I a, mean, they're so good. Mixed, it's like a Kit Kat bar mixed with like crunch, mixed with like a little bit of a Reese's flavor. Yeah, I don't, it's so They're so good. Mm. good. But I would have that as an option. <laughs> it's an option. As a dessert. And then I would have ice cream. I would, just I would have definitely have ice sweets, cream. I think, in oh. general. Yeah. Savory and sweet. But I would probably Maybe order, I'd be like, can you sort. get me Red Farm? The restaurant's located on the Upper West Side. <laughs> yeah, yeah right away, sir. Sun. We'll hold on. We'll go ahead and <laughs> yeah, send right? that one of our... <laughs> Can you please send yes. that to me? Thank our you. Our jail attendants <laughs> out to go get that for you right away. That would be my last meal, I <laughs> think. <laughs> yeah, but it's a really good question. Brand, yeah. do you, what would yours? I don't know. I, I said definitely ice cream and maybe like 
some sort of like pasta dish or never ending pasta right? dish from Italian. Olive Garden. <laughs> yeah, right? You're like, no, no, no. When I'm done, <laughs> yes. then you can take me. Exactly. The breadsticks. He found the loophole. <laughs> yeah. This man's been eating pasta for Bottomless. six days straight. <laughs> <laughs> There's vomit everywhere, but you won't yes. stop. No, you won't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. That's interesting. Okay, Hillary, what do you know? What would be oh, worse? Oh, mm. I don't know. I think I might have to have like a gigantic bowl of like pho or something. Mm. That's oh, like my I mean, go-to. Yeah. Like yeah. feel-good meal. I'm ramen. about to die. Might as well yeah. just. Yeah. Might as well just. <laughs> just give me a trough. Yeah. I'll <laughs> marinate in it. Eat all of it. I'll I don't marinate know. Marinate in it. I don't know. I would maybe do. You know. Okay. You would do a chicken sandwich from Chili's. <sighs> Not or just a chicken meal. sandwich. Mm, depends on where. Or a pizza. Oh my god, I love pizza. So <laughs> yeah, much. pizza. Quiznos. <gasps> Christmas. I would probably have the our old Angus sandwiches. Steak with the sauce. What's it? I, I used to get something, and that sauce, that red sauce. It's the black Angus <sighs> mushroom steak what sandwich we or whatever. I think we always ordered the same shit. We I did because yeah. we have Jesus. amazing palates. <laughs> amazing palates. <laughs> Oh God, yeah, that, that sauce that was like kind of spicy with like the no. onion and the mushroom. My on God. It. Oh my God. And there's no Quiznos. Did you get? Did you have Quiznos in Lubbock? Yeah, we did. Okay. But I don't remember if I. I think I had it like once. Oh it was God, around Quiznos. for like a year. The OG <laughs> Quiznos is in downtown Denver. Um, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, on um, on the little thirteenth. Yeah, yeah, that would probably be my more realistic last meal. Would be just the fattest yeah. sandwich with yeah. like an entire bag of chips. Yeah. Mm. Is like a family pack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, like yeah, like a it's like Costco chips. size bag <laughs> yeah. of chips. Yeah. So they're yeah. like, well, whatever. It doesn't matter. You know what I probably calories have. don't count in prison. No, <laughs> or when you're dying. Um, not on I death guess. row. Yeah. Nope, guess not. But I would have a bag of salt and vinegar chips. Oh, yes, bitch. And milk chocolate, chocolate bar at the same time. Okay. It's such Which, a weird Like, I get it. No, it I is. used to, like, eat that at work. Salty, vinegary, sweet. Mm. I do like this. Oh, my God. Mm. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. <laughs> yum. I love it a lot. Anyway. Oh, man. I well, love this was a fun episode. This was. Thank you yeah. for having Hillary, me. I'm so yes, glad thank you for having us. Yes, yeah, and Anna, I miss you so much. I know I miss you guys too. We get to see you in a couple of weeks, which is really exciting. Yay. And we'll be back in New York City for the summer. So we will be. Please remember to rate and review the podcast and subscribe and follow us, and that's all. And yeah. that's all. <laughs>